And now uh, we would like to uh, start the 12th Knowledge Forum. SDGs and equality growth, leaving no one behind, building sustainable and resilient societies, uh, which is uh, organized by a JICA Ogata Research Institute. I am today's uh, moderator, uh, Mitsumori from JICA. Thank you. Uh, first of all, we'd like to invite uh, Mr. Akio Takahara, the Executive Director of uh, JICA Ogata Research Institute, to give us an uh, opening address. Uh, Mr. Takahara, could you please turn on your camera? Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen. Uh, from uh, 2019, uh, JICA Ogata Research Institute have held a, a knowledge forum from uh, 2019. Uh, this is one of the uh, knowledge. Uh, so th the purpose of this knowledge forum is uh, to invite the researchers and uh, development practitioners and government officials and NGO, those who are engaged in research and the practice of a development cooperation and to have uh, various uh, free discussion opportunity and to deliver the latest information on development cooperation. And also we uh, invite the citizens who have interest in these uh, topics. And we have a Q&A session and we would like to invite your uh, questions and uh, uh, input uh, for the fruitful discussion. Uh, well, uh, today's theme is the quality growth. Uh, this uh, quality uh, growth was raised a priority challenge in the uh, Japanese development Development Cooperation in the 2015 uh, Development Cooperation Charter. And this was also a part of JICA's mission, which was stipulated in uh, the same year. Well, the poverty is uh, said to be the most fundamental development challenges. However, to resolve uh, those challenges, it is said that the economic growth is necessary. However, uh, not only the poverty issues, infectious disease, uh, conflicts, and the political instability, and the increase in natural disasters due to climate change, widening gap between the poor and the rich, we are faced with these various uh, serious challenges. And in fact, that uh, these challenges are observed in country with a uh, certain economic growth, uh, which means that uh, these uh, global challenges cannot be resolved only with a mere quantitative growth like a GDP growth. In order to respond to this kind of a situation, what the uh, uh, quality growth aims for is not a mere uh, expansion of economic scale, but we want to ensure that the benefits of growth will be permeated to all the corners of the society and to have the resilience in responding to the various shocks like economic crisis and natural disasters. And also, we want to realize the society with the sustainable economic growth across different generations. So quality growth where the older people can live in affluence is an indispensable concept that gave a various insights to the international community. Uh, JICA Ogata uh, Research Institute have a continued uh, activity on quality growth. And uh, as a part of a research outcome, uh, back in March this year, we published a book entitled SDGs, Transformation and Quality Growth. And in today's knowledge forum, we will be joined by Dr. Uh, Hosono, Senior Research Advisor of JICA Ogata Research Institute, who is the author of this book, to talk about the significant significance of the uh, quality growth in the SDG attainment. And he will also talk about how the uh, quality growth is important in international collaboration. Over the 10 years, he has been researching on various topics and uh, uh, make an analysis and uh, doing the research from the academic perspective, utilizing various case studies. So he will talk about specific approach on the uh, quality growth, utilizing various specific uh, case studies of industrial development as well as urban development. We will be joined by the Professor Ono, uh, who is the professor at the GRIPS, as well as senior research advisor of JICA Agata Research Institute, as well as a Professor Hirota of Saitama University, who are doing the research and quality growth together with the Professor Hosono. So he will be talking about the quality growth importance in addressing the development challenges and also how the international collaboration should be. So we and also the, this panel's discussion will be moderated by uh, Mr. Murutani, uh, the senior director of uh, the Office for Peacebuilding, Governance and Peace 
Building Department, JICA.、Uh, Dr. Takahara, thank you very much. You can turn off your camera. Now we'd like to invite Dr. Aki Hosono, Executive Director of JICA Ogata Research Institute, to give us a presentation on SDGs and quality growth, leaving no one behind, building sustainable and resilient society. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. I'm Hosono. Thank you for having me today. Please allow me to share my screen. As Dr. Takahara said earlier, recently the book was published, as you can see on this slide. So, based on this book, I am going to make a presentation. The title of this book has three keywords SDGs, transformation, and quality growth. From the relationship of these three keywords, I will start my presentation, and then, as you can see in number two and three, I will talk about the industrialization as well as the capacity development and urbanization and quality growth. What kind of strategies and approaches are necessary for quality growth? That will be the focus of my talk. First, on the quality growth and SDGs. I will elaborate on that relationship. In the SDGs, the perspectives of quality growth are included widely. Indeed, the adoption document of SDGs themselves have the statement that says that sustainable and inclusive growth will be aimed at. Furthermore, Goal 8 also states that the Sustainable and sustained inclusive growth will be achieved. So, the attributes of the SDGs are the inclusive and sustainable growth, and such growth is the target of SDGs, which means that the SDGs and quality growth cannot be divided. As many of you know, SDGs are the successor to MDGs. And also, Rio Plus 20 concept is included in the SDGs, and as a result, SDGs have been adopted and being implemented. On the left hand side, what is written in red has been incorporated into SDGs from MDGs, and Rio Plus 20. Has been flowing into SDGs Goal 7, which is shown in green. So these are the major parts of SDGs. However, what requires your attention is SDGs 8, 9, and 11 inclusive and sustainable growth, indeed, the quality growth, as well as inclusive and sustainable industrialization, and inclusive and safe and resilient urbanization. These goals are included in SDGs. Especially the growth aspect is clearly shown, as well as quality growth is also prominently included in SDGs, which requires our attention. So, what I just talked about is indeed the feature or attribute of SDGs. And another feature of SDGs that I'd like to highlight is the transformation. The term transformation is highlighted. As you can see in the resolution document of the United Nations, the title of that report itself uses the term transforming our world. It is included in the title. And as you can see in this diagram, based on that vision, transformational vision is at the top, 
and under this vision, transformative steps as well as transformative goals of SDGs are stated. So SDGs and transformation are deeply related to each other. SDGs and quality growth and SDGs and transformation. I just talked about the relationships of these elements. Transformation and quality growth are also directly and closely related to each other. I will skip the details, but the Kambor and Norman and Stiglitz published a book recently that was introduced in the side event of TICAT, Quality Growth in Africa. In this book, they say that the structural transformation is the hallmark of high quality growth. Structural transformation or shift or reform is the hallmark of high quality growth. They clearly stated that in their book. I'd like to summarize what I talked about so far. As you can see on the left, on the right, SDGs have transformational vision, and under this vision, they are touting transformative goals and targets. So transformation and quality growth are closely related to each other, and as you can see on the left, transformation drives quality growth. At the same time, the achievement of quality growth enables further transformation. That I believe is the connection and relationship of these elements. Now I'd like to move on to the second topic. The second topic is, well, as I said, how can we achieve such quality growth that I talked about? First, what I'd like to share with you is that the strongest drivers, one of the strongest drivers of transformation is the advancement and the transformation of the industrial structure. And I'd like to focus on this statement. SDGs also have goal nine, which aims for industrialization and advancement of industries. And as Dr. Takahara said, in the development cooperation charter, quality growth is also to be achieved. And to achieve that, in reality, the developing industrial structures is necessary. So advancement and of industries and industrialization are also closely associated with quality growth. So let me show that in illustration. Within the social transformation, what is very important is the industrial transformation or advancement and development of industrial industries. And advancement of industries drives the entire society. And this directly translates to the importance of industrial policies. Because if transformation achievement is indispensable to the advancement of industries, then industrial policies are also necessary in that context. So transformation achievement is critical in advancing industries, which has been clear in various researches. In Columbia University Initiative of Policy Dialogue, in 2015, there was a book called Industrial, Industrial Policy and Economic Transformation in Africa. And indeed, in this book, they argued what I am just talking about. And in this context, some approaches, values, value learning, Learning 
plays a critical role. From this perspective, Stiglitz and Greenwald wrote a book called Learning Society, a Creating a Learning Society. And in the Japanese translation, it says that learning can improve productivity in the society. So learning is what can improve productivity. And the learning society, or building the learning society itself, will lead to economic growth. From this perspective, valuing learning, recently this book was also published, as you see on the right. In the learning, it focuses on policy learning. JICA Ogata Research Institute published this book. From the quality growth perspective, uh, this book provides various insights. So based on the perspectives on the new industrial policies, these are the important key policy areas. And there are nine specific areas. And in the third bullet point on the slide, you can see some of these areas. First, the learning of individuals and organizations. Second, in finance and infrastructure. And third, the domestic market competition, international trade, investment, and the GVC. These are the major categories, and they are shown in the table here. Learning, infrastructure, and policy measures related to markets. So these are the key policy areas for developing industries. And with these key policy areas in mind, there are 10 different key studies that we worked on. I cannot introduce all of them today, but today I will just focus on two of them. One is from Bangladesh, garment and apparel industry. A shift or transformation in Bangladeshi economy was brought by this industry. And as you see at the bottom, the Bangladesh and the South Korean companies had a joint venture and they started a learning initiative in the organization and this learning expanded significantly and on, as you can see on the left, the infrastructure and on the right, the policy they started generating synergies. And as a result, as you see in the blue area, the productivity of the garment and apparel industry started increasing steadily. So it shows how important learning is. And as I said, the key policy areas are also playing an important role, as this case demonstrates. And the second case comes from Thailand, the automobile industry in Thailand. Basically, there are common aspects between the Thai case and Bangladeshi case, but in case of Thailand, uh, Japan also made contribution such as the construction of infrastructure and automobile industry policies were created based on policy learning and human resource development occurred, which promoted the development of small and medium enterprises, which have led to the expansion of such companies. So from these case studies, what kind of insights can we draw? First, the transformation of industries and development of, of industries. Such processes are endogenous. However, they are not 
automatic. So industrial strategies and policies are necessary in order to promote them. And looking at each of the case studies, learning, adaptation, and internalization processes took place continuously. And then the ownership was conspicuous and they were aware of their uniqueness from the perspective of the development of their respective industries. Especially many organizations were established with long-term visions and missions in promoting the industries. That was also an important point. The, from the quality growth perspective, how can we view this insight? The development of industries can be the driver of such policies and strategies, which means that the industrial policies and strategies must be created from that perspective. As you see in SDG 8, the inclusive and continuous growth aspect needs to be included in the strategies. In other words, the nine key policy areas, uh, which have been summarized into three categories, learning, infrastructure, and system. These critical aspects need to be strengthened, which will lead to the resilient, inclusive, and sustainable growth, especially the learning must be universal to the people. And as a result, which will lead to the response to the employment opportunities that will be created. So that was the second theme. And now we would like to go to the third theme. And now I am talking about the importance of learning in the industrial development. Well, uh, learning is not only important for the industrial development, uh, but also for the quality growth. Uh, learning is very important. Uh, that is my key message. Uh, in Japan, the Kaizen activity is uh, is well established in a uh, plant, and uh, this is uh, inclusive and uh, participatory activities uh, through which uh, the uh, productivity uh, has been gained uh, through learning. And uh, for example, uh, QC circles, uh, this is a Kaizen activity, and uh, their uh, purpose is uh, Dr. Ishikawa Kaoli. Uh, uh, wrote this book, and according to this book, uh, that will maximize the capability of each individual. Uh, that is the purpose of the QC activities. Uh, however, on the other hand, as shown in red on this slide, A World Development uh, Report in 2015 from the World Bank says that in order to gain the uh, productivity, paying the bonus or such a monetary incentive or the spread of a dismissal uh, without the uh, productivity gain. Uh, that is also ways uh, to improve the productivity that can be observed. On the other hand, the Kaizen activity uh, promote the uh, learning uh, through the productivity gain. So uh, learning uh, society, uh, I think this has a, a quite a high relevance with Professor Stiglitz's book, Creating a Learning Society. So the society to uh, uh, boost the uh, productivity through learning. Uh, that is uh, what the learning society is all about. So uh, learning will improve the productivity. That is the perspective I'd like to focus on. 
So developing the society which keeps the learning uh, will lead to the uh, productivity gain. And that will lead to the quality growth. What I am keenly aware of here is that the learning uh, thinking by Professor Stiglitz and also uh, the capacity development of thinking in the uh, international cooperation. I think between the two, uh, there are many commonalities. So the uh, international cooperation contributing to the CT, uh, that will uh, be, that is uh, one of the approach to improve the capacity at the job site. Learning at work, learning society, uh, learning at work. Uh, related insight can be obtained from the case study of international cooperation. Uh, at the JICA uh, Research uh, Institute, there are many uh, case study of international cooperation. And from this perspective, livelihood improvement in life, one village, one product project, and the collaboration related to Kaizen. Uh, so uh, from this perspective, we would like to uh, analyze the approach to strengthen learning capacity. And uh, here you can see the approaches of a capacity development and the mutual learning among the stakeholders, uh, the importance of mutual learning among stakeholders, and also the stakeholders' ownership is important. So uh, many... Uh, uh, points are uh, illustrated here, and uh, later I'd like to uh, elaborate on each item. So livelihood uh, improvements and the conventional technology transfer, capacity development approach, they are all compared with each other. One village, one product initiatives, Kaizen QCC approaches, uh, for each uh, item, what kind of learning uh, effects can be obtained? They are compared in one slide, but I would like to skip due to time constraints. From these case studies, uh, what is the key message? So I organize my thoughts to give you the conclusion. I would like to talk about two points. The first one. Uh, first and foremost, uh, people uh, fully grasp the challenges they are faced with and uh, try to resolve these issues. Such kind of ownership is very important. So strong awareness and ownership is very important. That is what I learned from the case study. And also uh, mutual learning and learning by doing. Uh, so practical uh, learning is also very important. And also in the CD process, the external actors uh, can serve as uh, catalyzers. So external actors are also very important, which means that the international cooperation can play a greater role. So these are the insights I obtained from the case studies. And uh, these are five points that are illustrated here. From the viewpoint of quality growth, I'd like to emphasize these uh, points. Uh, what needs to be done in order to strengthen people's learning in an inclusive manner? Well, not necessarily starting the learning process is not so difficult. The entry point. Uh, there are easy entry points to initiate the learning process, and the costs and risks are quite low. And the focus is on learning by doing and a mutual learning to co-create innovative uh, solutions. So the learning makes an intrinsic uh, contribution to enhancing specific capacity and a core capacity. And the uh, all cases uh, illustrate how learning and accumulation of knowledge and capability play a vital role in quality growth. So that's all for the third uh, theme. And uh, fourthly, I'd like to talk about urbanization and quality growth.
SDG Goal 11. Causal member states to make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. In order to uh, make it happen, more than anything else, uh, safe and inclusive and resilient uh, settlements. In order to realize that, uh, public uh, facility and infrastructure, including road, should be developed. And uh, you need to secure the public infrastructure. And to that end, the land redevelopment is uh, necessary. And there are two approaches for the redevelopment. Uh, usually, uh, the method of compulsory exploration uh, is uh, done. And the another one is the land readjustment. Exploration and the land readjustments. There are two approaches. Well, in Japan, the method of land readjustments is widely employed. As you can see here, uh, it is said that the land readjustment is known as the mother of urban planning in Japan. A third of a Japanese urban uh, area uh, was developed uh, based on the uh, land uh, readjustment. At the same time, uh, in Japan, which is prone to disasters, uh, the land readjustment has been a driving force responding to and recovering from the disasters. And especially in recent years, in reconstruction process from the Hanshin Awaji Great Earthquake and the Great East Japan Earthquake and Tsunami, uh, the land readjustments, including new approaches, have been implemented. And around the world, uh, the similar example can be observed. And here uh, you can see the processes of land readjustments. So uh, disorganized uh, land ownership is uh, shown on the left hand side. Uh, for example, uh, please think about the slum in urban areas, but uh, by building roads and creating public green spaces and uh, uh, draining, uh, drainage, drainage uh, uh, system uh, for the redevelopment and then safe and inclusive uh, town uh, can be created. Uh, Medellin, the city of Medellin in Colombia is a well-known example. Uh, let me uh, briefly introduce uh, Medellin Metallo is a company uh, to which introduced the cable car into the slum uh, areas. So they uh, built and introduced a cable car connecting the urban area to the uh, slum areas on the mountainous area. And this can be combined with the redevelopment and the readjustment of the land, and that enhanced the access to employment, education, and the health uh, dramatically. So a redevelopment and a traffic system, uh, and also the fight against the poverty and the narcotic uh, generate synergetic effects, and which uh, significantly improve the safety and the security. And also, a slum area uh, were on slope, and they are planned to landslide. However, uh, they are turned into green space as a public space, and also they introduced the drainage uh, to improve the disaster prevention and the uh, living environment. So they have seen a significant improvement in human development indicators. So you can see uh, the slum on the uh, mountainous areas, but the uh, I will skip here. On the website of the JICA Research Institute, uh, there is an uh, insightful uh, interview uh, from uh, Dr. Uh, Suzuki. Let me share uh, his uh, comments. Uh, from the center of the uh, city of Medellin, and the uh, higher land in the peripheral area are connected with the cable cars uh, by the efforts of the Medellin Metro. So this was quite unique activities. 
and one of the personnel that the JICA had a close relationship are those people who used to learn the land readjustments in Japan. And I will not dwell on the details, but that it was the fourth topic. And finally, I would like to uh, talk about the key uh, uh, summary points. The first of all, uh, the quality growth and the industrial development and urbanization that are closely linked to the uh, quality growth uh, should be endogenous uh, process. However, in order to facilitate those, the uh, growth uh, strategy and the industrial policy would be necessary. And in order to make it happen, there must be multiple approaches but the effectiveness of each approach should be uh, identified. And also, uh, we need to take into account the synergy with other approaches and to pick up the optimal approach to contribute to the realization of quality growth. So uh, later on uh, today's uh, discussion, I think uh, this uh, would be uh, possible. And another key message I'd like to uh, touch upon is that in order to realize the quality growth, effective approach uh, can be uh, driven uh, from the experiences of international uh, cooperation. So it is necessary to further deepen the uh, research Uh, the, my book uh, covers the uh, various other topics. Uh, today, I uh, focus on chapter three and four and six in my book. And in addition to these uh, chapters, the broader sense of uh, transformation and the driver of that is the industrial uh, changes and industrial development. And therefore, in order to promote those, the quality growth can play an essential role. So the growth strategy and industrial policy can play a central role for the quality growth. And I think that the further research needs to be continued, and that there might be areas for improvement. But with this, I'd like to conclude my presentation. And thank you very much. Dr. Hosono, thank you very much for the lecture. Now we move on to the talk session. Joining Dr. Hosono are GRIPS Professor and Senior Research Advisor of JICA Research Institute, Professor Izumi Ono, and Saitama University Professor and Visiting Fellow at JICA Ogata Research Institute, Professor Koki Hirota. The session will be moderated by Director of Head of Office for Peace Building and Governance of JICA, Mr. Ryutaro Murotani, please turn your cameras on. As you listen to the talk session, if you have questions, please use the Q&A function to post your questions there. Now the floor is yours. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. I'm Murotani. We will take about 30 minutes for the panel discussion, and in the latter half of uh, the session, we will have Q&A. We have distinguished panelists joining us today, so I can listen to their great discussion from the moderator's point of view. I am the, uh, the head of Office for Peace Building and Governance, so I think a lot about human security. Today, Dr. Hosono talked about quality growth. As I listened to the lecture, I was thinking about how to achieve both of them at the same time. About 10 years ago, in the first half of 2010s, I was at JICA Ogata Research Institute, and I worked with Dr. Hosono and 
considered how to achieve this as well as capacity development, how to spread capacity development from individuals to society. And that was the end of the MDGs period. So we also discussed a lot about what should be done post MDGs. And Dr. Hosono has further expanded the research. And as a result, the SDGs Transformation and Quality Growth was published. This book is open access, so please take a look later. So as we have distinguished panelists, first, following the talk by Dr. Hosono, I'd like to ask Professor Ono and Professor Hirota to give us your feedback. So Professor Hirota, please go ahead. I'm Hirota from Saitama University. I listened to the talk with great interest and I learned very much from the talk. Today, the quality grows. What I talk, what I think about quality growth uh, is something that I'm going to share with you, and I have one page right here. First, quality growth discussion should not start from the categorization of growth, inclusion, sustainability, and resilience. Inclusion, sustainability, and resilience must be kept in mind in growth discussion, but that is something that we need to take for granted. But if we discuss this as a starting point, then we cannot make any progress on the discussion. That is my impression. So when we discuss this topic, what's important is why this discussion itself started. The starting point itself is important. As Dr. Hosono said, Stiglitz has been publishing various books on quality growth. And at the same time, Dr. Stiglitz has been discussing beyond GDP, the indicators beyond GDP. And Professor Stiglitz has been leading international discussion on this topic. The world has been developed this much and people have become richer and more prosperous. People may think that way, but in reality, the well-being of the people. Has the well-being been progressing and has it been measured? These are the discussion points and based on these perspectives, uh, these uh, books have been published. Regarding GDP, HDI in the 1990s and in the 2015 uh, Sarkozy Committee has also discussed the indicators beyond GDP. And then in OECD, beyond GDP, 11 indicators have also been announced. The incomes alone cannot measure the well-being. So SDGs are currently being rev reviewed, and happiness is uh, one of the topics being discussed. So there are large international trends. And that is a discussion on indicators. The quality growth, I believe, is about our well-being. Not, we, we cannot measure our well-being just by income. And I think that uh, this is something uh, that is related to the methodology on that measurement. So MDGs have been developed into SDGs, but the quantitative growth itself cannot lead to prosperity. That's why SDGs have been established. So quality growth and SDGs are just a part of great international trend. Japanese government and APEC have also been uh, talking about quality growth concept. In order to make progress on this, discussion indicators and development approaches and methodologies, these three will be necessary. And indicator discussion has been progressing internationally, but as for the approaches, 
I believe that Dr. Hosono's book talks about theory, of course, but the book also talks about approach. And I believe that um, his book gives a viral or very infectious uh, narrative of development approach. Uh, narrative economics, uh, the book has been translated into Japanese, but the policy makers and the people's mindset has been influenced and impacted by the stories that are viral or infectious, the book talked about. So the SDGs being successful and spreading around the world, that is something that uh, we have been experiencing, but such viral narrative of uh, development approach is necessary, and a quality growth approach or story will be necessary in the future. And I believe that JICA has been creating such stories, and Dr. Hosono's book clearly introduced such stories in an easy to understand manner. Now, on a different note, What I have been thinking about is, well, when I was talking to Dr. Hoso, Hosoda, uh, excuse me, Hosono, uh, we were wondering why Japan's growth rate uh, was low despite famous Kaizen innovation. And what I'm going to talk about as to the answer to this question uh, has no evidence. So I would very much like to invite uh, your opinions, but I think that if we can arrive at the answer to this question, then we can find a new way of growth approach. And probably innovation does not always increase GDP with the current definition. Jim Peta said that uh, there are different innovations. A uh, product innovation is one where the product uh, is equipped with additional value. So that is the main innovation, but the the other pr innovation is process innovation. Rather than increasing the value, we can reduce the cost, and as a result, the corporate profit can be improved. In the Japanese society, statistically speaking, the price elasticity is high, so the Japanese companies are focusing more on process innovation rather than product innovation. but quality products are developed, Qu quality products will have to be developed from these two different points of view on innovation to increase price. Otherwise, uh, the growth cannot happen. So there are other reasons as well, but for these reasons, among the developed countries, Japan has been in a dark era in the last several decades or so. so you can see that that is a trap of the statistic. That might be an exaggeration. There are, of course, different reasons for low growth rate, and the aging of the society is one, and there is other system-related issue, and I'm spirit as well. And one of them may be the statistics trap and the industrialization uh, may not be seen in the statistical values or figures. And that have, has to be kept in mind. Otherwise, we cannot understand why Japan is not growing even though R&D expenses are higher, uh, excuse me, uh, as high as China or the US. And Japan may be seen that uh, it is not making effective effort, but that may not be uh, the case. So with the growth in income, at the same time that the, what the society should be aiming for, such kind of guidance is necessary. So in terms of statistics or indicator, for example, uh, beyond the G 
DP, uh, such kind of uh, dashboard composed of uh, 11 indicators can be presented, not only just looking at the GDP, but the, looking at the complex of the indicators. And also improving the statistics of GDP is one idea. Genuine uh, progressive indicators uh, is one way of thinking, and uh, I have uh, endorsed this idea. For example, inclusiveness. Uh, where the uh, gap uh, between the rich and the poor is not uh, reflected, and also externalities such as environment or the emission of uh, greenhouse emissions, and also education, infrastructure, and the health. The positive externalities are in because they are outside of the market, they are not captured in the existing indicator. So they are trend to capture those aspects, and the various uh, calculation estimates are made. So the way of thinking of uh, quality growth are close to this kind of a way of thinking. Uh, well, uh, the GDP uh, did not fully reflect the quality aspects that has been uh, mentioned over a long period of time. Maybe uh, my talk is uh, skewed toward the indicators, uh, but the, in thinking about the quality growth theory and the ahead of the theory, the uh, indicators and also enabling uh, approach, uh, these three elements needs to be considered. So JICA and uh, Dr. Hosono's books, uh, they uh, give us a highly viral narrative of a development approach. Uh, that is my feeling. So uh, that's all from me. Uh, thank you. Uh, Professor Hirota, thank you very much. So inclusiveness, sustainability, and the uh, resiliency, this should not be disintegrated. But uh, while achieving all of these at the same time, how can we achieve the growth? Or how can we navigate or uh, drive the growth in a way that we can achieve all these three elements at the same time? And how this can be uh, reflected in the indicators? I think that was your comment in the latter half. So this uh, transformation uh, that uh, Dr. Hosono mentioned is uh, indicative of uh, achieving these three elements at the same time. And now I would like to give uh, Professor Ono uh, five minutes uh, to give us uh, her uh, comment and input. Uh, thank you very much. I am Ono, uh, Dr. Hosono. Uh, congratulations on great uh, publication. And also, thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, knowledge uh, forum. So Professor uh, Hirota uh, gave us an uh, insight in an uh, organized uh, manner. So he talked about the importance of uh, thinking about the theory, indicator, and approach as one set. So I think these are important. Uh, from the viewpoint of contributing to the international uh, society. And I'd like to uh, touch upon the area where I am interested in. Well, as for the way of uh, development strategy of developing countries in the SDG uh, era, uh, the various specific options are presented and uh, also uh, the role of the donor has been suggested in various manner. How a recipient and the donors, uh, the both aspects should be uh, taken into account. So uh, uh, creating a practical uh, knowledge uh, for peace and development of JICA Ogata Research Institute is well reflected in uh, Dr. Hosono's uh, research. To be more specific, several points I'd like to emphasize on is, as Dr. mentioned, the structure tr transformation through industrial development, the uh, commodity-led uh, growth, and the um, industrial-led uh, growth. Well, the industrial development will create uh, knowledge as well as uh, development of the industrial capability. So uh, through the enhancement of endowments, uh, that will create dynamic comparative advantage and that will create the quality growth. Such kind of a budget circle was uh, specifically mentioned. 
Well, at the uh, research uh, institute, uh, uh, we have uh, conducted the research on the uh, industrial uh, structural development in Africa, and uh, there will be a webinar uh, tomorrow. Uh, so uh, the countries with industrial transformation are more resilient to external uh, shocks, as that was demonstrated. So there are uh, relevance here. Uh, learning and the industrial uh, transformation are driven by the uh, industrial uh, transformation. However, the market alone cannot uh, become an enabler. So. Uh, the horizontal uh, measures uh, that will uh, boost up the uh, level playing field for everyone. That is important. However, at the same time, uh, we need to pay attention to the potential industry through the vertical policy measures. So at the meso level, the human resources and the organization, technology, infrastructure, all of these needs to be developed. Such kind of a way of thinking is necessary, and that can be played by government. And not only the framework, uh, but also industry and the society. Uh, within the framework, uh, we have to think about the actors who play a role uh, here. And uh, what I would like to add on here is that in the age of SDGs, uh, digitalization, digital transformation is important. So industrial uh, development, uh, not only a skewed toward a narrow industrial development in East Asia driven by ma manufacturing, ugly, uh, culture, agriculture and the freshness, uh, and also aquaculture, so the meaning uh, has been uh, broadened, and the social problem uh, solving uh, various uh, aspects can be taken into account. So uh, having all these aspects in our, our mind, we can think about the broader sense of industrial development. And here the professor or doctor focus on the learning. The government should learn and how we can uh, develop the uh, specific uh, policy, uh, how uh, the government can uh, work together with the industry and and community and the uh, various actors should be uh, working uh, together in uh, land adjustment. So at the same time, uh, how can we learn? Uh, generally speaking, uh, universal uh, training and education and the governance strengthening, that is important. At the same time, having the specific goal, like uh, focusing on a specific region or a specific uh, industry, and then through try and error, you can make improvement. Learning for a special purpose, learning by experience, or learning by uh, doing uh, is the expression you used. Uh, so. And that there are various methods in learning as that was suggested. And dynamic uh, capability development through the specific experiences, uh, they are very important. That is uh, how we felt through the other literatures as well. So the role of uh, development cooperation and the activities by Japan. Uh, well, uh, as a member of a JICA, uh, we have a focus on the uh, CD, uh, but uh, in what way uh, we can uh, achieve the uh, learning uh, from the viewpoint of a uh, development collaboration approach? What I mean by the translative uh, adaptation is the absorbing or establishment of a learning or the way of uh, innovation uh, in accordance with the uh, specific situation and uh, as a way of the uh, uh, so global agenda or the various agendas are available. However, the missile level uh, perspective uh, targeting at a specific area or the specific uh, region uh, is necessary, where well, cross-functional human resource development and organizational development is necessary. Such kind of missile level perspective is necessary in a cross-functional manner in country assistance approach. And also, uh, that together with the illustration, uh, this was mentioned in the chapter three. So 
So since the time is limited, I will just show you this uh, illustration role of industrial policy in creating a learning society. For example, quality growth is something that we aim to achieve, which means that a MOFA can provide various knowledges and information, and it, that can be internalized and build and develop capacities, which will lead to comparative advantage, which will in turn lead to transformation. The government has to learn, and the government can also train the individuals and organizations and also the citizens and government will have to have mutual learning opportunities. That is important. And that's what I was thinking as I learned about this research. Thank you very much. Professor Ono, thank you very much. We don't have much time left. So from Dr. Hosono, I would like to hear some responses to the feedback from the professors and Professor Ono, you mentioned the quality growth and the role of international cooperation and the role of Japan and JICA in that context. So we would like to have uh, more discussion on this topic. So quality growth, the three elements, the growth to achieve these three elements and to drive transformation. The international cooperation's role, as well as the role of Japan and JICA in trying to achieve these targets. What is your view? Uh, Dr. Hosono, please respond to this question, as well as the feedbacks from uh, professors. Um, please take about two, three minutes. In the last two, three minutes, I heard a lot, so it's very difficult to respond to all of the topics, but before this forum, we had a briefing, and Professor Hirota and Professor Ono gave me uh, these comments and the briefing already, so I was enlightened the overall approach on quality growth is as Professor Hirota said, the vision and the approach will have to be enhanced in, uh, as well as indicator. And the Sarkozy Committee and SDGs, as you heard from the professor, we need to look at the definition of wealth and indicator must be established based on that definition. As we don't have much time, I'm just going to say that Professor Hirota's comment was focusing on the quality growth, essence of quality growth. Professor pointed out important aspects of quality growth. And Professor Ono, the significance of learning society and driver of transformation of industry and learning, the importance of industrial policies was touched upon. Professor gave us a, a very good summary on that. Thank you very much. If I had more time, I would speak for a longer time. Well, from Mr. Murotani, I also received a question. So to respond to the question, I believe that the essential challenge in achieving quality growth is how to achieve both these three elements as well as growth at the same time, and how to make progress in international cooperation context. And I believe that there are three different approaches. The first approach is inclusiveness, sustainability, and resilience. As we aim to achieve these three, we can also achieve growth at the same time. This is a synergic, high, highly synergic approach because the productivity will go up 
as we look at resilience. So the growth can be achieved as we include people, and as we reduce energy use, then the productivity will go up and the growth will be driven. I have uh, different examples in front of me, but that is the first approach. And the second is the key policy areas in industrial policy, the learning infrastructure and system to oversimplify the key areas. These are the three areas. And in these key policy areas, inclusiveness, sustainability, and the resilience will need to be built in from the beginning. This may sound an exaggeration, but we need to keep in mind these elements in making the policy or establishing the policy. That may be the second approach. And the third approach is, for example, when we develop mineral resources, we have a difficult uh, time achieving quality growth. If that's the case, the income or tax income that comes from the industry, a part or whole of it uh, should be allocated to increasing inclusiveness, sustainability, and resilience. The tax income should be used in enhancing these three elements. That may be the third approach that we can think about. So these were the things that um, I had in mind, and I believe that we need uh, more in-depth research in this area. Unfortunately, I could not elaborate myself in two, three minutes, but that is all from my side. Thank you. Dr. Hosono, thank you very much. I apologize for poor time management, but you talked about three different approaches. Thank you very much for the insight. Now, Professor Ono and Professor Hirota, can you also talk about the role of Japan and JICA uh, in international cooperation? Professor Hirota, please. Yes, thank you very much. Japan and JICA, the role of Japan and JICA. In international cooperation, uh, we have the technical assistance and also financial assistance. And among this, technical assistance uh, is becoming more and more important. For example, there are traps of middle income countries and the deindustrialization that is being happening um, too quickly. So the development model may be bogged down and it's difficult to achieve that today. So that is something that we have to think about and discuss together. So even more, JICA has been cooperating with different countries, so the models need to be offered even more, which means that we need to create a good narrative and spread the narrative further that will be important. Dr. Hosono's book is one good example of that. And in the past, JICA um, has been talking about JICA brand and Japan brand. And in the Research Institute, a project history was created as well. These were also uh, some examples of narratives, and they have to be further promoted. And individual cooperation cases, when we look at them, we should have inclusiveness and sustainability perspectives. Usually, sustainability is included, but vulnerability and inclusiveness is not always considered. The RAC in OECD does not really focus on inclusiveness and vulnerability even more, but vulnerability is directly related to human security and inclusiveness. For example, in the area of public policy, when we create alternative of policy, we need to evaluate that from that perspective. Many researchers said that so efficiency, effectiveness, and equity are always included as perspective. So equity perspective needs to be included in the development initiatives together with other countries in order to achieve quality growth. I believe that that will promote quality growth aspect. That is all from my side. Uh, thank you very much. Global agenda. 
So uh, we are trying to show the society we are aiming for at the uh, JICA Research Institute. We want to be a highly viral uh, narrative. So uh, this is what we are aiming for as the uh, transformational uh, society. And we are uh, calling on the other party to be a part of our initiative. And we want to be a hero highly a viral uh, narrative. Now over to you, Professor Ono. So maybe I may echo other people, but the three points. The first of all, uh, share, we need to become a facilitator for the uh, knowledge uh, for, uh, sharing. JICA, uh, so the Japanese modernization uh, experiences are organized by uh, JICA, and they are uh, shared with the relevant countries. So it's very important. And uh, through the past uh, collaboration and cooperation with Latin America and with Asia, uh, JICA has accumulated various good practices. So uh, we can connect all these uh, uh, parties. If, uh, if it is an unrealistic, uh, stretched idea that cannot be materialized, so uh, agriculture, farming uh, development, or the uh, garment industry development in Africa, uh, Vietnam, Sri Lanka, uh, Bangladesh, uh, these uh, examples can be introduced to. So not only uh, becoming a supplier of uh, knowledge, uh, but also by better understanding the needs of other parties. And uh, you have to think about which partner, partner is the best fit. So in that way, uh, the doing the facilitation is uh, necessary. And that is where the JICA can come in and uh, demonstrate their uh, insight and capability. Well, uh, you talk about the uh, the land adjustment uh, example, uh, they are a, a motivated person, and uh, there is a need. So those motivated people are showing willingness and to learn about the uh, land adjustment example of Japan. So those motivated aspirational people and the JICA's uh, researchers uh, network uh, who are working at the university can be connected with each other. So such kind of entry point is the key. So being able to cooperate with these people or uh, leveraging this network, uh, we can uh, realize the uh, low uh, entry point. So if we want to achieve a two uh, stretched uh, aspirational idea, it will be difficult. In case of a water utility a public company in Cambodia is a good example. So finding a good entry point and then uh, to uh, expand and to uh, permeate the uh, transformational activities. That is the key. Second, uh, thirdly, individual project is very important. Inclusiveness and also the resiliency needs to be secured. However, uh, perspective at the middle level is important. In the case of Bangladesh activities, FDI from the South Korea is coming in. The skills and know-how were provided to apparel industry. Then the local entrepreneurs uh, who showed interest are connected. Uh, because of development of agriculture, farm uh, development, the local women are coming to the urban areas and to work and make contribution. In order to do so, the infrastructure development done by JICA uh, realize all of this. And that became the uh, propagation of a transformation. So the uh, inclusiveness or resiliency or the sustainability is not self-complete, but at the middle level, the industry and the community and the region uh, should be connected in the uh, cross-functional manner. So all of these things should happen simultaneously. So how uh, we can uh, enable this at an organizational meso level, that is the key. Uh, due to my uh, poor time management and also uh, due to a broader, deeper uh, topic we are dealing with. So sorry, we are running out of time. So uh, the time is up. So we have to uh, finish the session here. If you can uh, bear with us, uh, we'd like to extend another five minutes. And uh, we receive uh, many questions. So uh, Professor Hirota and uh, Professor Ono and then uh, Dr. Hosono, in that order, could you please uh, reply to these uh, questions? Uh, 
one by one. Now we are talking about the role of JICA or that we talk about um, approaches. Uh, we are talking about the practical uh, discussion. But uh, before we close, we'd like to talk about the more uh, theories. So we received the two, uh, we have a two difficult question. First one is uh, the just uh, growing is not enough. Uh, from the 19th century, uh, such kind of discussion is uh, continuing. And uh, in the uh, 21st SDG age, and uh, what can we do that? And uh, another one is that the, how the JICA two missions and the quality growth and human security, how should we think about these relationship between the two? So uh, either way, uh, we'd like to ask uh, the panelists to respond to this question. First, uh, Professor uh, Hirota. Well, uh, to your first part of your question, uh, growth is not enough. Uh, but the poverty and the other uh, issues have been pre-existing. I think that the growth is necessary. That is the position I take. Statistically speaking, that is also the case. Trickle down that way of thinking is not uh, necessarily the case. Uh, automatically, uh, that is the case. In the fight against the uh, poverty, uh, the growth is necessary. However, what is difficult here is that, and that is why the discussion around the quality growth is uh, difficult. Inclu when we think about sustainability or resilience or inclusiveness, so the current generation, future generation, there is a trade off in case of resiliency. Uh, the uh, redundancy uh, of the society uh, may improve the resiliency. So how to strike on a good balance? That is the uh, uh, difficult uh, discussion. And that is why uh, we have difficulty in finding answers for quality growth. But the unlike before, uh, uh, just for the sake of uh, growth, uh, focusing on the GDP, is not uh, something uh, we should pursue. As though that is currently uh, still deliberated on um, among some of the governments. However, uh, that is not the answer uh, uh, for the quality growth. So uh, next, uh, Professor Ono. And uh, what is different in the current age? Well, uh, the environment and the poverty, uh, in addressing these issues, growth is uh, important. That has been the conventional ideas. That remains unchanged. But the now the speed and the global connectivity, uh, currently they have the higher uh, uh, implication, broader implication. So in Japan, we have a conventional ideas of thinking for the all the relevant stakeholders. Now it has a uh, global implications. So what is uh, happening in uh, Ukraine has an uh, impact on Africa and uh, Japan in terms of food energy prices. So uh, including the resiliency, the diversification of economic activity should be thoroughly uh, thought about. And also, the having the strengths of each country and the having uh, all these countries, having the uh, ownership is important. In terms of relationship with human security, in case of countries in conflict, the uh, foundation for social foundation for developing the learning society is difficult uh, because the society is a split. So first and foremost, uh, developing the foundation is the key. And that is the beginning of learning uh, with each other. So far is the a key starting point, and uh, at the same time, uh, building the trust is very important. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Ono. And now we'd like to ask uh, the Dr. O Hosono to respond to these two questions. I'm not sure whether I can respond to these two questions. So this is the conventional long time uh, question. And how this is different in the current age? That was your question. 
Well, I'd like to echo other two professors, especially as Professor Uno mentioned. In the current age where the connectivity is strengthened, uh, the inclusiveness or uh, sustainability or resiliency. So this is different from the past. And uh, now with the progression of digitalization, uh, so that is also related to these three elements. So the three aspects of quality growth, vulnerability, inclusiveness, and sustainability in light of climate change. These three aspects are there in general, but when we look at poverty as well, it is closely related. For example, in the world, the most disaster-prone country in the Latin America with this, uh, the earthquake and hurricane, the vulnerability has led to poverty. And poverty, as a result of disaster, has been exacerbating. And due to climate change, the food scarcity and other implications are seen, uh, which have been damaging the people in poverty. So the vulnerability, poverty, and sustainability are, com are closely related in a complex manner. And that is the current situation. And the poverty is not just about low income. We cannot explain that from that perspective alone. We have to work on that in an integrated manner and with quality growth. In the discussion of quality growth, we must think about how to tackle poverty. In the Development Cooperation Charter, it says that through quality growth, poverty must be overcome. I believe this statement is very important. So since the time is limited, that is all from my side. Thank you very much. Dr. Hosono, thank you very much. It's an old and new issue, but how to achieve all three elements at the same time, that is the challenge that we are facing. And climate change is something that was not there in the past. And intergenerational gap and inequality is emerging, also digitalization an advancement of digitization has also been making this challenge even more difficult. Professor Hirota said that growth is indeed necessary. So as I said at the beginning, I am always thinking about human security. So when it comes to this discussion, I always believe that transformation and growth are required. That is the impression I had. So high quality, quality growth and human security have to be considered at the same time. Otherwise, in the conflict affected areas, the countries and regions cannot be overcoming that situation. So I believe that achieving the two at the same time will be the challenge we have to tackle. So when we integrated our organizations into JICA, inclusive and dynamic development was the mission statement. So inclusive and dynamic inclusive development is what we achieve what we would like to achieve, but the dynamic aspect was also incorporated. That I believe is indeed what we mean by quality growth. You also talked about indicators and expanding the development targets and considering the local community, etc., cetera, uh, there were many different questions, and we apologize for not being able to respond to these questions, but these are some of the discussions that we would very much like to have. Today, uh, beyond GDP was also mentioned, SDGs period um, has about eight years remaining, so beyond SDGs, what kind of society we aim to achieve? 
is something that we can think about based on the insights we gained today. Dr. Hosono, it's a wonderful book. Thank you very much for your lecture. We had uh, great learnings. Thank you, and thank you very much for staying with us till the end. Although we went over the scheduled time. So this concludes today's knowledge forum. Dr. Hosono, Professor Ono, and P Professor Hirota, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Professor Ono, Professor Hirota, and Dr. Hosono, please turn your cameras off. Now, Dr. Hosono, please give us a closing remark. Now, since we already went over the time, I'm going to give you a very short remark. Today, we talked about quality growth, and the panelists and moderators have a great insight and experience uh, in this area, and as well as the audience members have also contributed to Q&A. We had a very productive session, thanks to all of you, so I'd like to express my appreciation. With that, I'd like to close my remark. Thank you very much. Dr. Hosono, thank you very much. Uh, the, dear panelists, please turn your cameras on again. Thank you. Thank you very much for a very insightful and interesting talk today. And to the members of the audience, thank you very much for participating in today's session online. This concludes the 12th Knowledge Forum by JICA Ogata Research Institute.